Welcome back to my dark room. Today, I need an RC print washer, but I don't want to buy one. So I want to make it. Normally when I work in the dark room, when I get a print to kind of the halfway stage, post fixer stage, I'll put the print into a tray with a Kodak tray siphon. And that works really well for what it is. It's a holding bath that circulates the water. But when I'm making color prints or even black and white RC prints, I really just want to go ahead and get it washed and get it done. And I'm not fully confident that the tray siphon does that very well. I need to test it, but I haven't done that yet. So I kind of want to make a high-speed print washer just for RC. I have plenty of print washers or the vertical slot type, but those are mostly made for fiber prints. They take a lot of water and they're meant to really wash multiple prints at once for a long period of time. And I'm not doing that. I just need individual 8x10 or 11x14 prints washed. So we're going to make one. And that's because a high-speed print washer if you look on B&H, a new one is like $100 for one that can do 11 by 14. I don't want to pay $100. It's just, it's not in me to do that. Even if you go on eBay and you find a cheap used one, usually by the time you add shipping, you're close to $100 anyway. And I don't feel good doing that either. I don't know, it's just something about spending $40 on shipping a tray. I just can't, just can't do it. Even if it were a dollar for the washer, $40 in shipping, something like that, just no. So we're going to make one. So I went to the big box hardware store here in my town. I got some pieces and parts. I have a spare tray. This is an 11 by 14 inch tray that I found in my garage. It must have been there for years. So I cleaned it out, washed it up, and we're going to use it as the basis. And we're going to use some bits and pieces, and we're going to see if we can keep this at least under $50 more if we make a few decisions along the way. So let's move the camera to where you can see down in my sink and let's start making a washer. All right, first thing we're starting with, piece of PVC, cut it right here. I have a longer piece if we need to, and of course I can cut this one down. These are cheap, this is half inch size, and we've got a cap, so let's just put the cap on. Now, I have some PVC adhesive we need to use that, we will. Uh, dry fitting, I mean, this is a pretty tight fit. We're not gonna be putting this under high pressure. So we may not need to actually adhere this at all, but if so, PVC adhesive is pretty easy to use. All right, so that's step one. Step two, I've got this piece. It's push on on one end, screw on the other. The screw is gonna be this guy. So it's a half inch MIP pipe here. And then, um, there's a quarter inch MIP here. So we're going to use some thread tape. I want to go get a wrench real quick so that I can tighten this on as tight as possible. I'm going to grab that. First thing I want to do is put the two brass pieces together. And I got the quarter inch because that's what fits my rubber hose right on there. And I'll use a pipe clamp to keep that together. So we've got a little bit of thread tape. And then we're going to crank this down. <clears throat> All right, that should do that. And then this will go in here. And we might as well use some thread tape, though I don't know if we need to for those connections, but it's what I know to do, so we're going to do that. There. Okay, so that should take care of that part. And then this goes on here, and we fill it up. But in order to make this actually wash, we need holes through here. 
So I need to remove both of these ends, so that's why we didn't glue them yet at any rate. We're going to mark just a straight edge. I'll do that off camera real quick with a, I don't know, ruler and a pencil or a pen. And then along that, we're going to drill some holes. So let me grab my pencil. Here we go. What I have here is just a 16th inch bit. We'll try that out. If we need to make the holes bigger, we can. Of course, we can make them bigger, we can make them smaller. I'm gonna get this out of the way. And we're gonna do our best here not to, uh, not to hurt ourselves. So let's just make a series of holes. Okay. So I've got them spaced about one inch apart. Uh, let's go ahead and assemble it. And I need one of my pipe clamps. I can never remember which size I'm supposed to use. So let's see. Yeah, that one. Okay. And we'll try this out. All right, that's actually pretty good. So these are just 1 16th inch holes and it's given me a pretty good flow. I don't feel like I need to uh, open it up anymore. Of course I can angle this anywhere I need to get water flow across the print. All right, I like that. And it's not leaking from the ends. So that's good too, that's a plus. Let's uh, just get the water relieved here. Okay. Well, that's good. Doesn't look like I need to cement the end. I can if I really need to, but so far, it's proving to be pretty watertight. Now, we need to deal with the drain. The way that the Patterson device works is tilted. We can do that easily enough. I have those wobble wedges. We might just put a couple under the ends. Could hot glue them or epoxy them to the bottom if I want it permanent. Otherwise, I'll just use them as needed. I'm gonna need two things. I need something to hold this to the edge of the tray so it doesn't move and I don't have to hold it. I've got an idea for that. And then I need to deal with water coming out the far end. The Patterson uses a hole which then has a hose go out the end. And if you're gonna use this on like a dry side, sort of out of sync situation, you can. Of course, that's gonna add expense because you have to buy another fitting. So I've got, with kind of that idea in mind, this fitting right here. And it's a garden hose connection on one end and then a barb for a hose on the other. And I don't intend to use this part, just the barb, put a hole, through here, put the barb through the hole, uh, maybe with some uh, plumber's putty, and then on the far side, attach the hose, push it as hard as I can, and then clamp it, and then that kind of seal it. That's a thought, and, and we may try that. This cost about $13, $14, so if we want to save that money, the other idea is just a series of holes drilled into the tray. Now, I'm going to have to make a hole one way or the other, but that would make it so I can't use this in uh, outside the sink. It's going to have to be in the sink all the time. If I want the safe space, say, blah, if I want the space savings in my sink, I'll need to make this work out. And that's where the uh, hose idea comes from. Uh, that's one big hole. So choice, do I save the money and make a series of holes in the end, or do I go ahead and use this, because I can always return it now, do I use this and make one big hole in the tray? I think I'm gonna try the one big hole. And then water will just drain out the hole at the end. I can use a hose and use this up on the shelf next to my sink where I use the uh, uh, print washers now. So what size hole would I need? Let's open this up and find out. I'm 
Yeah, five eighths. Do I have a five eighths bit? That's important to know. All right, I've got a five eighths spade bit. That'll work. I'm gonna use this two by four as kind of a handle. I have to kind of be here. So let's find the center. So that's kind of the seven and a quarter. So that's my center line. Ish through there. All right, well, the water ruined my marker, but we've got a place for this to go. So I'm going to drill a pilot hole for the spade bit to then go through. All right, well, I was able to get this to fit in nice and tight uh, without anything, but if I feel like it's starting to leak, I can always add some clear silicone caulk or something right around in there. You can see there's a pretty good fit on this side, just perfectly squeezed in there. So we're gonna see if this whole idea of holding it tight with the hose works. So I've got a spare piece of PVC hose, or yeah, PVC, and a hose clamp. So, you see, it pops out if I don't have it on there. All right, well that's, uh, I think as tight as that fitting's gonna get. Don't think we need the clamp, to be honest, but we're gonna clamp it to be on the safe side. Is that the wrong size clamp? Well, I may not have the appropriate size clamp, so. May not ultimately matter. All right, well, looks like we're gonna be caulking it and not using the clamp. <laughs> or I'm gonna have to find a clamp of the right size. Don't have one. But I can say that those fits on pretty tight. It'll still try to come off if I'm not careful. Even pushing the hose on there as tight as possible, I think it can still come off if I'm not careful working with it. But otherwise, we're there. All right, so let's test this out. And let's see, we're gonna need to lift the corner up. Let's put this piece of hose underneath as just kind of a ramp. But yeah, we're draining. We have a little bit of leakage from this side, nothing bad, nothing from that side. We're draining out our hose. Let's see if we're draining from here, if we're leaking. Well, we're not. So I think a little bit of caulk just to seal that will take care of that pretty easily. Okay, well, we are well on our way here. having a functional rapid RC washer. Okay, let's get the excess water off our workspace. All right, so our drain works, our hose works. Now, we need some finishing bits here because one thing we need, let's go ahead and drain this. I think if we're going to use this outside the sink, I'm going to need to cement these. It's a pretty, fight, a pretty tight fit, but not tight enough, so. Uh, I don't have any cement. I thought I did. I'll deal with that later. No big deal. But one thing I need to do is get this fixed to the top of the tray. And that way I can just have it sitting there. So, I bought these. This was like $3 for the bag. And it is some hose clamps or clips, holders. These are meant to be nailed to a wall and hold a piece of three quarter inch pipe in place. And you just put it against a wall. Now we're not gonna use it that way. What I'm thinking is that we will put a couple here and here, and then we'll make it this way. 
and then this will just sit on there. And of course you can turn this as needed to the right angle. But we need to get the nail out and replace that I think with a screw. We'll put two little holes here and here, put a screw up underneath, the screws into that spot. So let's see if we can get this nail out. I have no idea if we can. All right, well, the screw, because it's got these little ribs on here, let's see if we can see that, or the nail rather, doesn't want to come out backwards, and it's not designed to. It's designed to go this way. So I pushed it through, cut the head off with some clippers, and then we'll just pull the nail out that way. And then I've got a couple of screws, and we'll just screw that into place from underneath. And to do that, we're gonna put two holes. Now, the last thing I want is for this to become a joke. Like, uh, why buy it for a hundred when you can make it for three hundred? Okay. Got our drain. Got our hose. Clip that on there. And I may have put these where the uh, hose kind of blocks a little bit. Should have measured that. Oh, too late. There we go. And there we are. Just prop that up. Just imagine I'm using a wobble wedge. And we will get our wash down through. We will get our drain going through and and that's really it it wasn't that hard it took me about 20 minutes of real time obviously since i'm filming it and i'm running back and forth to grab some tools wasn't really prepared to do this today i just on a whim felt like i want to go ahead and get this project done so it took me about 40 minutes in real time but 20 if i was prepared money wise not that expensive. As I said before, it's $100 from B&H. May or may not charge shipping on top of that. I already had the tray, so no expense there. I already had the hose, no expense there. The pipe caps and hose adapter and the little clips to hold it to the tray, $19. Not bad. Now the barb for the drain hose was another 13 and a half. So that brought me up to about $33, but you don't need that part at all. You can just make a series of holes at the end of the tray, let the water drain out and you're fine. The barb for the hose, that would be if you want it to be out of the sink, as I said before, if that's not important to you, don't do it. Save the $13. Or if you can find a barb that is less, use it. So full regular price, $33 plus a tray. If that saves you money, but gives you a print washer, by all means, do it. That's what we're here for. Show you how easy it can be and save some money in the process because film and paper is expensive enough. Why add that expense? And it's every bit as good as the one you can buy. It's gonna wash the print, it's gonna drain the water, it's gonna work. So thanks for watching. I hope that gave you some ideas. If you like this sort of thing and you want to help support this channel, you can two different ways. Well, three different ways. If you want to get t-shirts, prints, little framing squares, things like that, you can go to my website. Links are down in the description and you can get those sorts of things. Or if you just want to help donate to this channel to keep it running, you can either be a sustaining member membership tab up there on a month-to-month -month basis or just on a one-time basis if you want to get me a roll of film so we can do some sort of test you can go down to the corner and hit that super thanks and donate the amount of your choice and that keeps us moving so thanks again we'll see you next time <laughs>